right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jar- Jared Spiewak, who is in New Hampshire. How are you doing, Jared? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. And Jared is the lead strategist, Blue Dog Media. And I love your, uh, I love your LinkedIn, by the way. I, I help <laughs> exceptional businesses make more money. And then I'll be honest, I didn't put a lot of thought in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I put that in there because LinkedIn has grown quite a bit recently. I'm like, you know, more and more people are asking to see it and checking it out. I'm like, I might as well just be honest and say, listen, I literally have not looked at this for years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, tracking sales and ROI for a lifetime, uh, for greater lifetime value. So, so Jared, like everybody agrees that, you know, you need to track sales and you need to track ROI but a lot of people don't do it very well. Why do you think that is? I mean, so what I'll say is that I am yet to come across a small to mid-sized company that is actually tracking from click to ROI. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're not doing it is one, I think that the technology just isn't fully understood. I think in each individual part is, I think people understand the value of a CRM, they understand the value Mm -hmm. of conversion tracking, but they don't understand the value of making sure those things talk to each other. So that's one thing. And the other is that uh, people, people are emotional, not analytical people based Mm -hmm. on their feelings all the time. I'll talk to someone, Hey, you know, we've been spending $30,000 a month on our Google ads for the past three years. It's going really well. Awesome. Uh, you know, what are, what's this number? What's that number? No idea. It just feels like it's going well. Right. So there's, and that's enough for them because they feel as though it's going well, then they're happy with it. So that's mm-hmm. the two things is it's just the technology just isn't fully understood and they base things off a of feeling rather than actual analytical data. Yeah. And of course, I mean, and that's uh, and you can to some degree get away with that when times are good. Right. And, and that's, you know, sometimes when people think, oh yeah, I'm spending all this money, well, business is good. So therefore my Google AdWords must be working. And then obviously you go through a crisis like today. And what's the first thing that happens is everybody starts going, oh, how much are we spending on Google AdWords? Oh, slash that now. And, and there's, and the, and you can't come up or the people can't come up with a good reason or the are, or the analytics to prove that it is either working or it's not working. So then you kind of go to the other extreme, right? Right, exactly. And that's that's a really big problem that's happening right now is that there are so many people who are looking at the marketing spend going, okay, great, you know, because we spend a lot of money in this, I guess we need to save money, so we'll just stop spending on that. But what they might not realize is that that could be either, great, you were spending $10,000 a month on that, well, you were wasting anywhere from zero to $10,000 a month on that channel. That could have been your most profitable channel that you just took that you just turned off even during these times, meaning that instead of saving your company money, you just lost it a bunch of money. Whereas maybe this other thing just wasn't really working for you. So if you're actually tracking it, then you can actually sit down and have an actual discussion of, okay, great, historically we have spent $1 and we have gotten $2.50 back in profit from this channel. Now we're getting $1.17 back in profit. So it's not nearly as profitable, but it's still profitable. Is this worth it for us to keep spending this money? Or perhaps there's another channel that is still more consistent. Let's take some percentage of our funds out of this channel, reinvest it into this other channel. It's a lot lot more profitable right now. That's where you're going to be able to make a lot more decisions. And it's a lot less expensive to actually set up than people think. Yeah. So what are some of the things that people need to, what to start with, where, what are some of the very fundamental things that people should be tracking and looking at to, to set a baseline? Yeah. So when it comes to online marketing, one of the Mm -hmm. greatest things is that a lot of the very, very basics are done for you. And let's just use the Google ads as an example, because most people have some amount of experience with either Google ads or Facebook ads, and they're fairly similar in terms of the the numbers. So when you, you, those platforms will track like clicks, click through rate, uh, how many people landed on your website. If you're using Google analytics, which like 99% of businesses are, you'll be able to see where traffic came in from what they did when they were on your website. That's out of the box, very simple to set up. Now the next level, which most people have set up is the actual conversion tracking. If you're an e-commerce website, it's very easy. That's like basically built in. If you're a service-based business, it's a lot more complex. You're tracking things like form fills. So either through a specific button click or when someone Mm -hmm. lands on a thank you page, you can also track phone calls itself, which is what a lot of people miss out on through the use of like call rail, call fire, call tracking metrics. Personally, we use call rail. We recommend it for all of our clients. 
But what that does is that allows you to track somebody clicks on your ad or they come to your website, however they manage to come to your website on their computer, they then pick up their cell phone and call you. You can track that back to that user, back to that channel. So you can see how many phone calls do we get from Google ads, Facebook ads, SEO, so on and so forth. Those are the very fundamental things that everybody should have set up is being able to track clicks to actual leads. Right. And then obviously, once you get to that, then it's obviously lead to conversion or um, and, and value of conversion. Right, right. So the next thing that you need to be tracking is, okay, great, we're getting all these leads, but that needs to go into some sort of CRM, depending on your industry it might be a little different if you're a law firm, it's your case management system, um, so on and so forth. So within your overall database of your customers, you should not only be having the inquiries and the information about them, but you should also be tracking where they came in from. Yeah. So there needs to be that connection there. So that's either manually done. If there could be a third party connection, especially if you're using something like Infusionsoft or uh, Salesforce, most tools will integrate with those naturally. Otherwise you might have to hire a developer, which they're a lot cheaper than you think because API is very cheap for them that go and make connections for yeah. you. Yeah, with, with, you with Pipeline, we have an open API and we have many integrations. So it's pretty simple, you know, to do with our CRM and to your point is, yeah, we, um, all of our, all of our leads that come in on the CRM side of the business, we track exactly where they come from. So every lead has a lead source. Exactly. So what your sales team is able to see is that not only how many inquiries do we get, but also where they came from within yeah. your CRM itself, you should also be tracking things like how long did it take you to reply to them? If they were a form fill, you know, was your team getting there within an hour or did it take them two and a half days to actually check the email account? Cause that's a big issue. And that can be why you're not seeing a return because sure. you know, people are like, all right, I've already contacted like half a dozen businesses since the time that I filled out your form. So you'll be tracking how long it takes to respond to them. Um, it, how long your conversations were, which uh, call rail or other call tracking platforms can do that for you. You should be tracking. Okay, great. How many of the leads we got were qualified? What type of leads were they? So assigning them to specific services or products that you have, depending on how your business is run. And then what you can see is, okay, great. We got X amount of leads for this service from this source. You can see, okay, great. How many leads did we get this month from Google ads so on and so mm -hmm. forth? How many leads that made it to the actual sales process? How many customers, clients, patients, et cetera, do we get from this? And then from there, what you should be tracking is through however you're tracking your revenue, whether that's your invoicing platform, whether that's uh, some sort of integration, whether you're just uh, get checks mailed to you, whatever it may be, either within your CRM or a different platform, depending on what level of access it is and who you want to see on your team you want to be able to see what you should then be able to track okay great uh, someone came in and they bought our uh, lawn mowing service in which we charge someone a hundred dollars a month for they've been a customer for 12 months and so we can see we build them 12 times twelve hundred dollars total so what we can do is we can go okay great let's look at the past three months how much revenue have we made how much revenue has come in from each individual service but also how much revenue has come in from google ads versus facebook ads versus seo versus referrals whatever it may be and that's the most powerful conversation you can have not only internally but if you're uh if you're also working with an outside company for your marketing to actually sit down which uh, this is what the conversation should be is not, Hey, great. You know, we paid you a thousand dollars and we spent $10,000 on Google ads and we got X amount of leads. You should be saying, okay, great. Over this period of time, three, six, 12 months, whatever it may be, we spent a total of this and we've made a total of that. Because at the end of the day, leads doesn't tell you a whole lot. That could be a dollar per yeah. lead or a thousand dollars lead. Yeah. And I think the other thing that a lot of people um, bump up against, so maybe they get these, uh, get these lead sources going and they start to get what looks like a lot of leads coming in. However, their close rates are, are low. And when you start to look back, it's the part of the thing is that the leads aren't the right leads, right? So you haven't done a good job of attracting the right people. Right. And so there's a, uh, whenever you, I, and when you're tracking all this, you, you're able to do is actually identify these sorts of problems mm -hmm. when you're, because everyone thinks that they close 100% of their leads. Everyone thinks mm. that, you know, their team is perfect and everything like that. Once you're actually tracking it, you get the actual numbers. And so maybe you should be closing at 35%, you're only closing at 20%. What you can then do is narrow down on that problem. One is that how does your business differ from others? So for example, a client that we work with, their cost of their services are three times the average price of everybody else around them. So they convert a lot fewer uh, leads into customers because they're way more expensive. However, it's worth it for them to do so because they make more money on the back end. So that's one thing to look at is, okay, you know, maybe it's because we offer have a different offer, pricing is different, whatever it may be. From there, it's okay, well, we're, 
are we getting different types of conversions from different sources? Maybe Google Ads is converting really well, but people who are coming in from Facebook isn't. Okay, great. Now let's narrow it down into that platform. And why is that? Maybe it's because on, on uh, Facebook, you're, you have some sort of weird offer that people are getting something for free to get them onto mm -hmm. your site, to get them in there, whatever, but they're not really interested in what you actually have to offer. They just wanted the free thing. And that could be a problem. That could just be a numbers game for you where, you know, you know, we're, we're going to get a lot of crap leads from this, but where it's going to be worth it in the long run, whatever it may be. But when you're tracking all that, you can make those sorts of decisions and actually narrow in. Here's the problem. Here's everything that's causing this problem. What's this actual solution? Yeah, because because um, when um, a lot of people when they start out though they start they go for the volume thing right so they just try and get leads and <clears throat> leads from everywhere so that's something that you have to refine over time because otherwise um, you know you dilute your focus and you spend a lot of time chasing after things that are, are either you're never going to close or if you do close they're not a good fit for your business anyway and they're probably going to cost you in the long run. Exactly, and you'll be, when tracking all this you'll be able to see exactly exactly what channels bring you the best leads and you'll be able to see what to double down on. That's another big mistake people make is they go, okay, great. Been doing some Google ads for a bit. Now let's try some Facebook ads. Now let's try this. Now let's try that. And you have a thousand dollars in 12 different channels mm -hmm. rather than having $12,000 in one channel that you know is doing really, really well for you. And then being able to invest heavily in the second channel and then, you know, and that's doing really well and so on and so forth. Yeah. And then discovering it to your point there, and then you figure out whether that the channel that you may want to put more money into, whether that scales. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen in the past that some lead channels will do really well, and then you start to maybe put more money into it, but the actual lead source doesn't scale. Right. Yeah. That's another problem you might find is that you might increase your, your spend in a channel and then your cost per lead might increase as well. And you might mm -hmm. not, you know, there's a, there's a fine balance between volume and ROI. You need to find out where you want to be with that. You might be able to spend a, a dollar and make $5, but if you spend $10,000, you might only be able to make $3 or mm -hmm. $3 for every dollar. However, at the end of the day, if you spent $10,000, you made $3 for a dollar. That's still $30,000 that you made. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you're getting volume over the percentage of the ROI. Yeah, absolutely. What are, what are some other maybe surprising things or things that a lot of people don't think about tracking that you think they should be? Hmm. Uh, honestly, I'd have to go back to the, the sales side of thing. This is a, because mm -hmm. we only work with service-based businesses. Sure. The, the tracking side of things is a little bit more uh, difficult compared to e-commerce where it's, everything's done online. And mm -hmm. what I find often, it's a, it's a, honestly, it's a very tough conversation to have as someone looking in on someone else's business to go, great, you're, you're spending all this money on marketing. You know, you're, you're really adamant when we get onto conversations about making sure you're getting clicks for as cheap as possible, that you're ranking as high as possible, that your website is converting high as possible. But what we're seeing on our end is that you're getting all these inquiries, but you're not closing enough of them into yeah. actual mm -hmm. sales into cases, et cetera. And, you know, in my experience, that's a super tough conversation. It's always, a, a, it's, a, it's something that no one ever wants to admit or really realize that mm -hmm. that's a problem. So a lot of people don't invest in that process where they don't really think of, you know, why don't we actually create processes and systems around our sales process to standardize that? Why don't we, you know, uh, myself and my two people who man the front desk during their various shifts, why don't we uh, go to this uh, sales conference for our industry that's going to help? We're all going to level up our skills we're also going to take that knowledge and it's going to be there. So even if they leave me as an employee, we still have that overall knowledge base in our company. And yeah, maybe that's a trip that you have to go from New York to LA and it's going to cost you, you know, a total of like $7,000 to do. I get it, you know, depending on where you are, that could be expensive, mm -hmm. but at that $7,000 one-time investment helps you go from even improving your close rate by a couple percent. That's probably going to be very helpful for you if that couple percent even only lasts for let's say two three years right and so that's where a lot of people don't really think of they're always thinking of how can we improve the roi of our marketing however google ads only brings you clicks your website only brings you leads your sales team turns those leads into actual customers and your fulfillment team whatever that looks like is what's taking those customers and making sure they profit from it so reducing your expenses will allow your google ads account to have a higher roi uh you know making sure that you're not you know if you're profiting ten thousand dollars you're not taking eight thousand dollar a month distribution because you know you feel as though you built it you deserve all this money because that's going to hurt your marketing roi unless you're in a really good situation. So like things like that, people just really don't think of. They just think of, okay, the ROI for our marketing is people click on our ad, they convert into a lead. That's it. But it's really, you know, 90% of it, 80% of it is after that fact. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why sales process is critical because it's not, uh, yeah, because uh, converting a lead, there's a lot of different stages in it, in most sales processes in B2B for sure. Um, and you need to understand at what stage of the sales process you may have a weakness or you could do improvement or whatever. And if you don't have that sales process defined, you're never going to know that. And as you say, you're just going to look at these kind of raw numbers and go, I get this amount of leads and I convert this amount. And maybe if I got 10 times as many leads, I convert, you know, 10 times as much, but that never, that, that equation never actually works out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what do you think the, the future, if you look down the road now, how do you think things are going to evolve from here in terms of, of the ability to, to track and manage things in the future? I think overall things are going to get a lot easier as, as uh, technology is becoming uh, cheaper in a sense. You know, if you go back you know, uh, 10, 15 years, kind of early internet, if you wanted to track any of this, you had to have enterprise level software. You had mm -hmm. to be willing to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month to be able to track this. And now it's, it's more and more accessible to people. I think over time as uh, people who are entering business or starting businesses are more uh, technologically thinking and forward, a lot of these things are going to come natural to them where they're thinking about how to track this, where a lot of people who were in business kind of pre-internet that always did things based on feeling because you couldn't track this. Sure. You know, a lot of those are the people that are really hard, uh, difficult to convert onto this because you know they've been doing things off of feeling for the past 30 years. Why would they change that now? So I think over time, uh, you know, tracking is going to become more and more common I, even myself i've been doing this for about eight years it used to be like pulling teeth to get someone even to track phone calls you know they didn't understand the value of it they didn't understand mm -hmm. why and now more and more often we're coming across people who already have that set up or have looked into it before and but didn't know how to set it up so they were a bit nervous about it you know, i had a conversation earlier which typically is really painful with a business going like hey you know we need to set up call rail and track this for you they're like you know what i've been looking at this for years i'm, I'm ready to go just tell me what to do and i'm really ready to go so people are more and more aware of this that it, it's easier to set up with more and more uh, tools coming out. A lot of them not incredibly expensive. You don't need enterprise level software anymore. So just the overall accessibility is is improving mm -hmm. quite a bit. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think um, that's exactly what it's going to be. And it's become kind of easier and easier to integrate systems and have them all talk to each other. And uh, And I think that's it. Yeah, we're going to get to the point where we can really get back to focusing on the you know the relationship selling the interactions all of those other things because we will have all the data flowing the way we need to have it uh listen jared this has been great we're bumping up against the end of our time so uh jared's um Spiewak, uh blue sorry it's a blue dog blue dog i love that name um, Blue Dog Media. Um, all of Jared's information will be in his contributor bio, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, of course. So what we do is we help service-based businesses make more money to operate the businesses of their dreams. We do that through SEM, our search engine marketing, Google Ads, mm -hmm. PPC, and SEO. Uh, like I said, we only work with service-based businesses. If you listen to this and you don't think I sound like a complete idiot, I recommend you check out some of the other content I've produced on my personal site or the agency site. You know, there's no sales pitch here, but you know, feel free to check it out. And you'll be like, Hey, you know, this guy seems smart. You want to ask me some questions. I'm very easily accessible through a contact form. Yeah, absolutely. And one other thing I would say to people is uh, one thing that a uh, phenomena that we've seen over the last number of years is that specialization is becoming more and more, um, you know, apparent. And because things are, while technology is making things sim simpler to some degree, being able to get the most out of it has become more complex and specialized. So if you, if you do want to uh, increase your SEM and all of that is, I would absolutely encourage you to look up an expert like you, like Jared, because it's very hard to get that expertise in house. And, uh, and to be honest, um, uh, you need you need somebody who's got that uh, deep level of expertise for sure. All right, listen, Jared, this has been great. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.